Jeff and I are really engaged with our church community. Uh, we've both taken on leadership roles in the last several years. I actually participate in the praise team and sing with them. And I think that it's just been a blessing to have this congregation surround us and be a part of our lives, giving us the love and support that we need. I do different things at the church. I, I spend a lot of time in the back of the church doing a lot of the technology. Not well, but I, I, uh, I love to serve uh, in that capacity. This is the church that I actually grew up in. Um, where we're living now is, is my hometown. And this congregation has a special place in our hearts. It's where we got married. And I think that we've, we dedicate a lot of time and love to this congregation. I can't do a lot of the things I like to do as often. Uh, I might go on a little hike, but then I'm gonna be beat for the rest of the day. We really didn't have any indication that Jeff was experiencing anything. So when he went in for a regular physical and came back with the news that there might be something more serious happening, it really came as quite a surprise to both of us. My name is Jeff, and I have a rare kidney disease called IgA nephropathy. IgA is a normal immunoglobulin, which is important in fighting infections, especially in the gut and in the respiratory tract. So in some people, the IgA that's normally produced has a slight change in its chemical structure. And when that happens, the body recognizes this as an antigen and thinks it's a foreign protein, and it mounts an immune response to this abnormal IgA which then causes inflammation in the kidney. And over time, if this is not well controlled, it leads to scarring and kidney failure. So that is the essence of IgA nephropathy. I was a over-the-road truck driver, and to maintain my Class A CDL, I'm required every two years to um, maintain a medical certificate. What one of the nurses did was they did a dipstick test, which was not required uh, for the DOT physical. Um, so the new nurse did it by accident and they saw that I had protein in my urine. And um, the doctors came in, they started pricking my finger, doing different things to try to figure out what's going on. And at that point, they they realized that I need to actually go see a primary care physician and um, get a little bit more testing done. When you look at the universe of RKD patients, they are on the tip of the iceberg. There's not universal awareness of what it means to be a patient with RKD. The treatment and diagnosis are quite unique to this population, and every rare disease has a separate, completely different approach. And the tragedy is that People who have kidney disease do not have any symptoms until it's very late. So we are completely dependent upon, say, doctor's offices doing simple tests like the urine exam or a blood creatinine level. All the signs and symptoms I was attributing to getting older. You know, I was um, in my early 30s at the time, I believe 32. A little bit of swelling, a little bit of sore back. You know, I thought, Okay, I'm getting into my 30s, I'm just getting older. There are some people who have a very rapid decline in kidney function from the onset to kidney failure. And if you happen to pick them up early in the course, you can start aggressive therapy and slow the course. And on the, the other extreme end are young people, especially children, who are prone to get IG nephropathy that sets up a very a sharp increase in the abnormal IgA and you get the diagnosis very quickly, you have a head start compared to the other patient who has no symptoms whatsoever. My doctor was very focused on preventing future damage to my kidney. My doctor wanted me to stay off dialysis and I want to stay off dialysis because it really freaked me out knowing what could happen to me uh, once I start dialysis. So she came up with a treatment plan uh, to try to help that by, and which included having me reduce my sodium intake and also reduce my protein. 
And it begins from the time of diagnosis when a perfectly healthy young person is given a disease diagnosis which, with lifelong consequences. And it's, it's shocking, uh, you know, that, that you can go from a, from a completely normal, no care in the world to saying, now I have, to, I have to come back to doctor's offices, do blood tests. It's very important for us physicians to, to be available, to explain, to communicate, and essentially help the patient along this journey. The fact that Jeff had only lost about 50% of his kidney function when he was diagnosed meant that we could take steps to try to slow the progression and start living with this diagnosis in a more productive way. There are specific medicines which we'll employ, but there are two FDA-approved drugs right now which are shown to slow progression and reduce proteinuria. And we can draw from one or, e or both of these to, to give the patient the best chance at preserving kidney function over time. So when you look at the, uh, the historical approach to treating Ig and nephropathy, uh, there's been a, a rapid evolution over the last, especially 10 years, I should say. And then we used to go along with intermittent courses of uh, corticosteroids, and, and most recently, uh, with a better understanding of why Ig nephropathy happens, we can now target different parts of the uh, what we call the pathogenic pathway. When you start with the abnormal antibody, all the way down to inflammation and scarring, we can look at these so-called hits and target therapy towards quietening the whole process of Ig the abnormal IgA production and eventually to the inflammation and scarring. My wife and I handle the burden of this disease uh, differently. I struggle with just the fact that I know that there's something there. In a lot of ways, I've made peace with the fact that I have a disease, and but also it's always in the back of your mind. Walking alongside him with this has changed the nature of our relationship. Um, we have this new thing in our household that never really goes away even though there's no outward indication that Jeff is suffering with this from day to day. In some ways, it has affected some of our decisions. Uh, we might not be as active as we might want to be otherwise. Jeff struggles a lot with fatigue and just um, not really wanting to do things some days, and I've had to become accustomed to recognizing that that's part of this diagnosis and that's part of him now. You're always having to think about what you can't do, what you can't eat, and also living with IgA, I'm tired quite often. I didn't realize that that was the initial reason why I was so tired. Emotion is a big part of this journey and it's, it's not unexpected, but it's probably the one that people don't see us dealing with because that's the part. That's the part that we have to deal with just here in our home. <laughs> We have this amazing network of family and friends surrounding us, but for a lot of them, Jeff is this outgoing, personable human being. So they don't see his exhaustion and the struggle that he has to deal with in living every single moment of his life with this diagnosis. We are very excited with uh, what's happening in the world of IG nephropathy, not only in treatment, but also we are looking for biomarkers that will avoid the biopsy. Our team is working on the gen genetics of the disease. If we can identify people with a certain genetic signature, it is possible in the future we can target therapies. So all these are very exciting times in terms of the understanding and, and consequently the treatment of IG nephropathy. Jeff right now is is really pretty stable and that's a blessing to us that in the eight years since his original diagnosis, he has progressed, but not as rapidly as it could have been. Everybody is a little bit different and, and that's been the progression of his disease.
One of the things that I'd love to do is to get the word out that IGA Nephropathy exists. I am um, an ambassador with the IGA Nephropathy Foundation, and I love going out to um, doctor's offices. I want, I want to tell everybody about this disease. If we spend too much time um, thinking about the future and just dwelling on this diagnosis, uh, it kind of takes away from who, who Jeff is and who these loved ones are that we have. It's not just a disease, it's a person. And the more that we can support and love on the person, I think that the better their life is. There's a turtle that lives on the other side.